The actions of Russian soldiers at Chernobyl were extremely dangerous and stupid at a local level, according to experts inside Ukraine. But a further issue at the nuclear plant and one other taken over by Russia could now present a much wider risk. Here's what we know. Russian soldiers who drove their vehicles through Chernobyl's toxic red forest kicked up clouds of radioactive dust, according to plant workers cited by Reuters, with a sensor near waste storage facilities recording the absorbed dose of radiation as seven times higher than normal, according to the state agency of Ukraine on exclusion zone management. Without radiation protection, this was suicidal for the soldiers, according to one Chernobyl worker, as the radioactive dust is likely to cause internal radiation in their bodies. However, it is not the main nuclear threat to Ukraine right now according to nuclear expert Vadim Shumak, cited by MIT Technology Review. Rather, the main threat comes through spent fuel. There are about 20,000 spent fuel assemblies stored at the Chernobyl site, and they contain a huge amount of fission products such as cesium and strontium, which are very radioactive. If Russia was crazy enough to demolish these storage sites, Shumak said, it would pose a problem. The scale of that problem at Chernobyl is mitigated by the fact that the material has already decayed over time. However, elsewhere at Zaporizhia, the second Ukrainian nuclear plant that Russians have captured, any damage to the spent fuel assemblies could result in an enormous radiological emergency, comparable to what happened originally in Chernobyl, according to Chumak. This possibility is of particular concern because while reactor buildings are extremely difficult to destroy, spent fuel assembly storage definitely could not resist a strike by modern weapons. This vulnerability was demonstrated in Fukushima, according to Shumak. There, developers put countermeasures for a tsunami in place to protect the equipment, but the tsunami was one or two meters higher than predicted for the worst-case scenario, and rising temperatures in the used fuel rods eventually contributed to the release of higher levels of radiation from the plant. On a more practical level, while both Chernobyl and Zaporizhia are currently being run by their Ukrainian staff, according to Voice of America, Shumak also cautioned that disruption to monitoring activities means that if something bad were to happen, hours would pass before it would be noticed by a remote monitoring network set up elsewhere around the country. The International Atomic Energy Agency has expressed grave concern over Russia's capture of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the largest in Europe. In a Friday statement cited by CNN, Ukraine's state emergency services said a training building inside the main reactor complex caught fire after shelling from Russian military forces, while the state nuclear regulatory inspectorate said that although the plant's six reactors remained intact, compartment auxiliary buildings for reactor unit 1 had been damaged. Experts speaking to science journal Nature have cautioned against comparisons to the 1986 disaster at Chernobyl. However, because unlike at Chernobyl, each reactor sits within both a massive reinforced concrete containment structure and is enclosed in a pressurized steel vessel. Additionally, The Guardian explains that the Chernobyl disaster was caused by a graphite fire which sent a radiation plume across Europe, while the Zaporizhia plant uses pressurized water reactors which do not involve graphite. One issue that does remain, though, is that according to Nature, as the attack took place, 5 of Zaporizhia's six reactors had been shut down. The problem here is that uranium nuclei and used fuel rods break up, and as a result, radioactive isotopes can accumulate and produce heat even after a shutdown. To mitigate against this, shutdown reactor cores still need to be cooled, which requires power, and if the reactor's active cooling suddenly stopped, the plant could face a scenario similar to that of the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan, when power was cut off after the March 11, 2011 earthquake and tsunami, and three reactors melted down. Even this scenario is unlikely however, as one nuclear safety researcher at the University of Tokyo explained, as the Ukrainian plant has several alternative cooling systems, and experts told Nature that even if a reactor core were to melt down, it might not cause a major release of radioactive materials. Elsewhere, strategically having taken Zaporizhia, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has now warned Russian forces will attempt to capture yuzhno kryensk nuclear power plant, according to the Associated Press. The U.S. is sending 100 kamikaze drones to Ukraine to help fight off the Russian invasion. Here are the details. The Switchblade is a two-foot-long, five-pound drone designed to loiter over the battlefield and crash into its target while detonating an explosive warhead. The drone is launched from a tube and operated with a handheld controller. It's small enough to be carried in a backpack and can be set up in less than two minutes. The smaller Switchblade 300 is designed to take out enemy personnel and light armored vehicles. The larger Switchblade 600 can destroy heavy armor like tanks. The Switchblade 300 uses daytime and infrared cameras and GPS to target distant enemy positions. It has a range of 6 miles and can fly for 15 minutes. 
The wave off feature allows the operator to call off a strike within four seconds of detonation to engage a different target. This makes the switchblade ideal for urban combat because it avoids collateral damage and allows for strikes with pinpoint accuracy. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.